So, in this video, I'm going to cover some um, reactions of the, the leadership community in uh, medicine and standards um, and cardiology and prevention regarding the new information coming out from ASCEND. The ASCEND trial uh, was published on August 26th um, in the New England Journal. It's regarding uh, at baby aspirin and... Um, and omega-3 oils as preventative for heart attack and stroke. The ASCEND trial was specific to diabetics and I've, uh, I've done a complete video on that. Um, I can, uh, you can find that on my channel. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite terms is, uh, or phrases is, it's just not that simple. I get a lot of feedback from my wife and viewers and others that, you know what, bottom line it, just tell us what we should do. Um, <clears throat> I'm not so good at that sometimes. What I end up doing is telling you what the facts are and telling my patients what the facts are. And uh, then you have to make some of your own choices. Now, it's very interesting. I'm going to go through some of the reactions of the, um, of, uh, that, uh, the community, the medical community that I mentioned a minute ago. And you'll see how there's so many reactions to this information. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, started off as an ER doc. Um, anybody that works in the ER realizes that most of the stuff that patients bring in, the death, disease, and disability should have been prevented, should not be happening. So I went to get training, um, uh, did very well, enjoyed it, and have spent my career uh, helping uh, mostly primary care docs, but others as well, uh, learn about the science and how to, to do prevention. Um, <clears throat> so, the ASCEND trial. This is a, um, a summary from the European Society of uh, Cardiology. Um, why? It was the ASCEND trial was presented simultaneously at the European Society of Cardiology Congress on the same day that it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. There were several different trials um, looking at prevention of um, heart attack and stroke. Uh, one in di using aspirin, uh, also in uh, omega-3 in, uh, in the ASCEND trial. The ASCEN trial was specific to diabetics. There was another trial going on, uh, ASPRI, which it looked at patients of advanced age. We'll talk about that one later. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of comments about the study, just a couple of reminders. There were 14,480 patients with diabetes, age 40 and above. The average age was 60. They had no cardiovascular disease history, but as I've mentioned in other Places. They didn't do a CIMT. They can't say that these patients did not have plaque already. What they found was a, uh, well, let me just read the, um, well, uh, they found a, an 8.5% occurrence of um, ischemic, uh, transient ischemic attack, heart attack, stroke. Um, so, uh, 9% occurred in the placebo trial. So you had a 1% decrease in um, heart attack and stroke. There was, uh, however, a significant increase in hemorrhage. Um, so you prevented one type of uh, stroke, the ischemic hemorrhage, or ischemic stroke, which comes from a clot, and you um, ended up increasing and giving a lot of that away with um, hemorrhagic stroke, a, a stroke where you had a bleed into the brain. But that's just strokes. It also decreased uh, heart attacks. But again, you also had a lot of uh, GI bleeding. Now, which is worse, GI bleeding or um, heart attack or stroke? Clearly, heart attack or stroke. So when you get down to the those details, which would you rather have, heart attack, stroke, or... Um, GI bleeding, most people would choose GI bleeding because you can fix that. Um, <clears throat> you see how this is starting to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, at the end of the day, here's some of the um, responses that you get from the 
uh, leadership community. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Jane Armitage uh, was in the clinical trial service unit uh, at uh, Nuffield Population of Health. Uh, her, her point was, aspirin did, as expected, reduce the risk of serious vascular events. But, as is expected, it significantly increased the, ri the risk of major bleeding. Um, her point was, you have to weigh the benefits for, versus the risk. Um, <clears throat> Here is a comment from Prakesh Didwana. His was one of the more interesting ones. Dr. Didwana is the uh, professor of medicine and director of the heart failure program at UC San Francisco School of Medicine. Okay, his point was, um, even though the trial was done with very good intentions, this is Dr. Didwana, uh, very, very good intentions, I, and it studied diabetic patients supposedly at high risk. The overall event rate was low, and, and that's true. His point was, uh, it's rare to see, or unusual to see, an 8.5% 8 8 or even 9.5% heart attack and stroke rate in a diabetic population. So his point was, you get what you select for, and what you actually selected for in that population had to be a healthy group. They did acknowledge that uh, these people were all on, uh, tended to be on appropriate dose uh, treatment with uh, statins and blood pressure medication, as well as uh, some other things. So um, his point, he, he said, I don't expect this to make any change on the guidelines at all. And it did what we uh, have always said. I'm going to continue to recommend it for my diabetic patients. Um, and we know it's going to decrease serious cardiovascular complications. Um, <clears throat> here's Dr. Ileana Pena. Dr. Ileana Pena is um, on the, she's in Cardiology Today, uh, editorial board member, and she's also uh, at Montefiore Medical Center and Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Um, in her Cardiology Today editorial board position, she also interacts with the uh, American Heart Association Guideline Committee. Her point was, I'm going to be talking with them about this. It, we probably need to change the guidelines, meaning probably um, do away with the uh, recommendation. Now let's go back for a minute to the um, American Heart Association, I mean, the, not the American Heart Association Guideline, the USPC uh, Preventive Services Task Force Guidelines. What do they recommend? Since uh, Actually, for decades, they've recommended um, baby aspirin for people uh, 50 to 60 that are healthy and can take baby aspirin for a year and don't have a, um, a bleeding problem. That's for prevention of heart, heart attack and stroke and cancer. Um, for patients 60 and older, they say, uh, look, we don't, you need to figure out whether they, how do they weigh things? Actually, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force in the, for people 60 and older, do have the, uh, the same complication, <coughs> excuse me, factor that I have with my own patients, and that is, you pay your money, you take your risks, or uh, you take your licks, as Pogo said. There are benefits and there are risks. We're going to give you some of the, uh, the information here and the patient needs to make their own choice. Um, and again, that choice is, which would you rather have? An increased uh, risk of um, GI bleeds, some bleeds in the eye and some bleeds in the brain, or a significant increase in heart attack and stroke, uh, ischemic stroke. So again, I wish I could make it simple for all of those folks out there who are saying, Brewer, just bottom line it, make it simple, just tell me what to do. I'll give you the information. I don't think anybody wants to, to make your decisions regarding prevention for you. I can tell you what I would do. Um, <clears throat> many people ask that. Well, just to remind you, I'm not a candidate for aspirin anymore. Uh, when I found my atrial fib, 
atrial fib puts your even paroxysmal atrial fib, occasional atrial fib, which is what I have. That puts you at increased risk for stroke, significant increased risk for um, um, ischemic stroke, and aspirin doesn't help for that. You have to take what's called a NOAC, or you should take that, and that's what I'm taking, Eliquis. Uh, if I weren't taking Eliquis, what would I do? I'm uh, pre-diabetic. I know I've got plaque. I don't know. I think I would uh, probably remain on baby aspirin. I was taking that up until the atrial fib uh, and the Eliquis. But I tell you, <clears throat> it would be awfully tempting to say, heck with this. The benefits and risks are getting even more and more cloudy, foggy, and as they do, my own personal emotion of simplify and quit taking any kind of medicine you can avoid taking, that would at some point probably take over. There's some other studies coming out about uh, aspirin and uh, pr primary prevention of heart attack and stroke. Um, we'll cover those in related videos. Thank you for your attention, interest.